click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this lecture we will be understanding how to improve the capacity of the system. Remember we have a very limited bandwidth and because of which it is difficult to put all the users in that bandwidth. Hence we try to improve the number of channels in such a way that many users are able to access the entire system. As the demand for wireless services increases in the cellular design, techniques are needed to provide more channels per unit coverage area. Meaning, more number of users when they are trying to access the system, it is necessary that enough channels should be maintained so that all the users are able to use the system. There are following techniques which helps us improve the capacity of the system. The first technique is cell splitting. The second technique is sectoring and the third technique is micro cell zone concept we'll see one by one so what is cell splitting cell splitting as the name suggests we divide or split the cells in such a way that the cells become smaller in size because the cells become smaller in size more such cells will be required to cover the entire geographical area due to which more number of channels will be required Hence, it helps us improve the capacity of the system. We know that capacity is given by m into k into n, which is equal to m into s, where m is the number of clusters. In cell splitting, we are dividing the cell into say half of the radius. The size of the cell is reducing and hence the number of cells that are required to cover the entire geographical area should increase which means the number of clusters should increase. Say initially, I had 7 cells in the cluster. Because of the reduction of size of the cell, the cluster size is also reduced. To cover the entire geographical area, more such clusters will be required. Hence, cell splitting is nothing but the process of subdividing a congested cell into smaller cells, each with its own base station and a corresponding reduction in the antenna height and the transmitter power. Since we are to reduce the size of the cell, how can we do that? We can do this by reducing the height of the base station and reducing the power. When we do this, the power radiation of the cell decreases. It means the coverage of the cell decreases. Hence, the size of the cell decreases. In such a way, cell splitting can be done. Cell splitting increases the capacity of the cellular system since it increases the number of times that the channels are reused. As I said earlier, as the number of clusters increase, the number of co-channel cells also increases, which means the number of frequencies reuse also increases. The smaller cells are added in such a way that we preserve the frequency reuse plan. Please remember, we are only resizing the cell and the frequency reuse plan remains as it is. In this diagram, we can see there are larger cells that cover the entire geographical area. Here, the base stations are placed at the edge of the cell. Because the base stations are placed at the edge, we can see we have three base stations per cell, which are named as A, B, C, D and so on. For example, the center of the cell is having more users and the number of channels are not sufficient for these users. So, we try to resize the entire system in such a way that the number of the channels increases. If we look at the center base station which is named as A, what we will do is we will place other base station at half of the distance of the initial base stations. These base stations will have smaller height and smaller power radiation due to which they will radiate only to a limited area reducing the size of the cell. For example, initially if the entire cell had 1000 channels, now the smaller area or the new cell created will have 1000 channels. Let us take the example of a circle. If I have a circle of radius say r, now if I have a new circle with the radius exactly half which is r by 2. 
then the number of circles that are required to cover the capital r or the larger circle will be four times if we apply the same principle here say i have a thousand channel in a larger cell the new cells that are required to cover the same area will be four times hence the four cells are required to cover the initial area so if one cell had 1000 channels the next four cells will have 4000 channels with the same coverage area but the capacity of the channels is now increased remember we are still maintaining the frequency reuse plan over here for example if you see the e base station the new e base station is placed between the earlier e base stations maintaining the frequency reuse plan similarly the G base station, new G base station is placed between the older G base stations in such a way that we are maintaining certain amount of distance so that the core channel interference is reduced and the frequency reuse plan is preserved. The only drawback of cell splitting is the number of base station increases. That is, the hardware of the system increases. But the advantage obtained here is that more number of users are now able to access the system by cell splitting. Another method to improve the capacity of the system is given by sectoring. Here we keep the cell radius constant and we convert every cell into sectors. Sectoring increases the signal to interference ratio so that the cluster size may reduce. We will see this how it happens. Here we are using directional antennas for every sector. This technique of decreasing the co channel interference and increasing the system performance by using directional antennas is called as sectoring. Now, let us focus on how signal to interference ratio can be increased. Now, let us focus on how signal to interference ratio can be increased. Signal to interference ratio, if we remember, is given by D by R, which is also given as root of 3 into capital N raised to the small n, which is the path loss exponent, divided by the interference. If the signal to interference ratio increases, we can very well see that the capital N value also increases. Because the capital N increases, that is the number of cells in the cluster increases, the co-channel interference reduces. How this happens? Say the number of cells in the cluster initially were 7. Then the co-channel distance was smaller between these two co-channel cells. Now as the signal to interference ratio increases, say the number of cells also increase, which is nothing but 12. Because the number of cells in a cluster are now 12, the co-channel distance between the two co-channels will now increase because 12 cells are used here. In this way, by increasing the signal to interference ratio, we can increase the number of cells which eventually decreases the co-channel interference improving the capacity of the system. In the next diagram, we can see how cell sectoring has been done. The above diagram shows that Three sectors of 120 degrees are created. The below diagram shows that six sectors of 60 degrees have been created. Every sector has a directional antenna which is used for transmission and reception. These directional antenna radiate only in their sectors and not other way. The only disadvantage of sectoring is we are increasing the number of directional antenna which in turn is increasing the hardware of the system. In the next diagram we will see how interference can be reduced. In this diagram we can see there are many cells. A cluster is created of 7 cells which is exactly at the center. The center cell of this cluster is named as 5. We can see there are 6 co-channel cells with the same name 5 which are around this cell. We are now creating sectors in every cell. The sector is of 120 degrees. And because it is a directional antenna, all the sectors are going to radiate towards the right hand side. Now let us check the radiation of every sector. The cells on the right hand side will radiate in the right hand side and hence it will not interfere with the radiation of the center cell 
we are now checking the center cell we basically want to find out how many cells are interfering with the center cell which is named as 5 we can see there are six co channel cells in the first tire in the six co channel cells the two co channel cells which are on the right hand side are going to radiate only in the right hand side because of the directional antenna hence the radiation in the backward direction with the center cell is not possible the cell that is above the center cell which is named as 5 will also radiate in the right hand side direction and not interfere with the center cell radiations similarly a cell which is below the center cell named as 5 also has radiations in the right hand side and will not interfere with the center cell radiation of 5 hence we are now left with only two cell which are towards the left and the bottom left of the center cell we can see the radiation of these two cells are interfering with the radiation of the center cell in this way we are trying to reduce the co channel interference of the center cell which initially was 6 if sectoring was not done because the sectors are created now this six number has decreased to only two cells which are interfering with the center cell radiation due to which if we go back to the formula of signal to interference which is also given by root 3 of n raised to the path loss exponent upon the interference since the number of interference is reducing the capacity of the system improves another drawback of sectoring is when a mobile moves from one base station to another base station then handoff is required since we are transferring the channel from one sector to another sector another drawback of sectoring is when a mobile is moving from one sector to another sector handoff is needed because we are changing the channels from that sector to a new sector this handoff is carried out by base station and intervention of msc hence the computational load on the msc also increases in the modern mobile communication system the handoff is done in such a way that msc is not concerned and hence the computational load of the msc decreases hence handoff is not considered as a major problem in sectoring next we will move on to the concept of microcell zone the increased number of handoff that are required when sectoring is employed this results in an increased load on the switching center hence in microcell zone concept the handoff does not take place each zone site is separated by a transmitter and a receiver which are connected to a single base station and share the same radio channel the zones are connected by coaxial cable fiber optic cable and microwave links to the base station as we can see in the diagram we have a cell which is divided into three zones every zone is having one transmitter and receiver and all the transmitters and receivers are connected to the base station via zone selector here the multiple zones and the base station make up a single cell unlike sectoring handoff is not required whenever a mobile moves from one zone to another zone the channel is handed over from one zone transmitter receiver to the second zone transmitter and receiver in such a way the computational load on the msc due to handoff is reduced a given channel is active only in a particular zone in which the mobile is traveling and hence the base station radiation and the interference are reduced here there is a trade off between the number of transmitters and receivers that are required as we can see one cell has three transmitter and receivers so the number of transmitter receiver required are very high but even if the transmitters and receivers required are high we can see the signal to interference is very high because the number of zones are individually transmitting and receiving the interference is very less if we reduce the size of the cell then a smaller region will be operated by these three transmitters and receivers because the size of the cell will reduce more number of cells will be required hence more number of clusters will be required to cover the entire geographical area which in turn increases the capacity so we can increase the capacity of the system 
also reduce the interference by increasing the signal to interference ratio but the only drawback here is more number of transmitters and receivers are required every transmitter and receiver will only operate in a given zone this technique is useful in highways and traffic corridors etc thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ekira and subscribe to ekira